And I think we could line over a hundred of, of our watchers down the line and you could probably get 20 or 30 different ap- answers from people. Like, it's, it's one of those types of races. Hello and welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. And we're recording this on Monday evening. It's two weeks before... Cheltenham Eve, Christmas Eve, what do you want to call it? Let me know how you'll be feeling. I'll be feeling very nervous at this stage. Hopefully be in Cheltenham. Dad will have just come over from Birmingham. I'll have got the, the train up and we'll be meeting up. He'll have winners for me. I'll have losers for him. It's just a standard year on year at this stage. But the fact that it's so close now, handicap weight's coming out soon. Jeez, I'm pumped. Oh, pumped is the word to describe it. Cannot wait. Less, well, just about two weeks to go until the big week. And thank you very much for all the support on these videos. Today, we're going to be looking through the novice hurdles. So we've got the Supreme on day one, the Ballymore on day two. We've got the Mayor's novice hurdle on day three, and then the Albert Bartlett. One of your specialities. It's a race I do quite like. It, it tends to, you know, throw up some horses that maybe are a little bit against the grain, perhaps. So uh, that's the way I've played it in the last few years. And fingers crossed we'll have a bit more luck this year. And fingers crossed. If you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to Let's Talk Racing if you haven't already. We're trying to hit 17,500 before the Cheltenham Festival. We think it's possible. Um, and also a couple of things. For those that might be new to the channel this year, you might be wondering, what do you do that's special for the Cheltenham Festival? And what we're going to do is we're going to do our pre-festival week. So it's the week before Cheltenham. And on the Tuesday, we preview every race on the Tuesday. On the Wednesday, we preview every race on the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday, etc. Uh, so that'll be four videos that week. And that will be next week. Cannot wait. Oh, it'll be absolutely fantastic. And of course, I know we talked about it slightly in our previous video there last week about this Sunday night stream as well on LTR Plus for the members. There's been new members this week as well well which has been absolutely brilliant to see again thank you very much for all of the support on that but that's the sunday night before cheltenham so a day and a half before the festival i just can't even imagine how jumpy i'm going to be feeling then I, i'll be struggling to contain myself i know i absolutely can't wait so we've got four videos that week and then we've also got a live stream on the sunday it's going to be mega a lot of hard work but you wouldn't have it any other way at this time of year anyway let's get cracking uh, the supreme novice hurdle first race on the first day how are you feeling coming out into this so you're just thinking just just back a winner there's no there's no, I, I actually don't think there's a better feeling all week than backing the winner of the supreme oh, just fantastic relief even no matter what price it is i remember appreciated winning it a few years ago in the covid year five to four or something like that i was jumping around i got back to 50 to one winner mm. uh, it's just it, it's a hard race i don't have a brilliant record in the race i'm hit and miss i'm kind of one year on one year off obviously got it wrong last year I was big on dice or dynamo and didn't realize just how good connie hill was and i do now i'm not going to make that mistake two mm. years in a row but at the same stage is there a connie hill here i don't believe there is yeah you know it's a very hard race and i know people are humming and hawing some people are now saying that this isn't you know it's because it's not a great race and stuff like that but at the, at the same stage it makes it a fantastic betting medium and i think we could line over a hundred of of our watchers down the line and you could probably get 20 or 30 different ap- answers from people like it's it's one of those types of races and i'm not sure where you're feeling you've obviously got fast vega at the top of the market very hard to forgive very hard to forgive um, he was just beaten out the back of the telly how can you back a horse I know from what he's done before you go oh, you know three to one could be an unbelievable price and if you are happy to forgive him then then I would suggest taking that equally it was so bad that it's very very hard to back him four or five weeks later for a race like this I, I personally don't think I'll be doing that um, Marine National in their second favourite where do you sit with Fasal Vega and Marine National yeah well Fasal Vega is, is such a hard one to, to really get a handle on I don't think you could really say three to one's a good price because playing devil's advocate to what you've just said about it could be a gift if he was back to his best sort of thing at the same stage if he didn't have the reputation he would have you know if you're out the back of the telly a month and a half before Cheltenham you wouldn't be you wouldn't be single figures for the race you know and, and he's just there on on what he's previously achieved obviously the champion bumper from last year which it has taken some knocks i think that's looking into it a little harsh because of the way it was ran and i still 
subscribe to the view that I think that champion bumper has left a mark on plenty of those horses. It was run on deplorable ground. Remember, they were out 10 minutes before the race. It looked like it may have been abandoned at one stage. It, it had gotten that heavy and that deep, and there's a few horses that haven't recovered. I couldn't back him. Marine Nationale, 7 to 2 best price at the moment. I will be backing him for this race. I don't think I'll be backing him right now. Um, I know I've said this to you, I've said this to, to Tom and Jack in our house as well. I believe you still might be able to get kind of 9 to 2, 5 to 1 on the day, because there's going to be people, and I don't want to generalise British people, but there are going to be plenty of British people that are going to look at the Supreme and go well Barry Connell I don't really know who he is and I can't justifiably think that he's going to train the winner of the Supreme and I'm turning on racing TV every day Josh another Barry Connell horse goes in another one goes in another one goes in like how many winners does this man need to have at what percentage before people start believing him this is a big step up for him though like if Marine National goes and win the Supreme that's the biggest training win of his career it is but what what price do you make good land in the valley more if he does go and win are we potentially overlooking Elite Tom like he's gone and, and just improved probably with each run this year and gone and won a grade one yeah I suppose so and uh, I'm, I'm the quickest to crap the horse but he was very impressive at Leopardstown I think if you were looking at it probably from my perspective which is probably bias against him for some reason or not I just haven't ever taken to him the race has fallen apart obviously the favourites at the back of the telly the high definition was, was second fav or third fav. It was close between him and El Ashe Tompa's second fav. He's unseated at the fourth. And the rest he's beaten, A, he should be beating anyway, and B, are both two and a half, if not three milers in Dark Raven and in the pocket in the future. Both point-to-point -point horses. Dark Ra Sorry, Dark Raven is a, a staying horse that's won a few bumpers in the pocket, was a point-to-point -point winner. So I don't know about that form, really. I uh, know I said it to you just before we went on air. I don't think... I, I think I've, I've slightly lost my Scoobies to a certain extent. I could see high definition running actually a huge race in this. I agree. I agree. And they were going an extreme clip. What do you think would have happened if he stayed on his feet? I think he'd have won the race, to be honest. I don't think... It looked throughout... Now, very easy to say. He's, he's gone at the first down the back, still a mile and a bit to go at Leopardstown. But it looked like Fasal Vega was going really fast. Mm. High definition wasn't far off him. And obviously, because of that flat speed... It didn't look like he was under the same kind of gun pressure that Fasal Vega was under. Obviously, very early on. It could be talking complete nonsense here. And he has looked like a deplorable jumper. He got away with it at Leopardstown at Christmas time. He didn't get away with it at the Open Racing Festival. It's just, it's a weird supreme this year. I've seen a lot stranger things happening than him run well. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, an, it's frustrating, I think. Out of all of them in the betting here that we've got in front of us, the one that I'd back if they were to run was Imperial Pass. But it looks 90% that he's going to go to the Ballymore. I think he won his maiden hurdle level two mile three, two mile four. He stepped down in trip one at the Moscow Flyer, a race that Mullins has used with a lot of his supreme winners in the past. I think that he's got everything. He jumps really slickly. I think he's quick and everything. He stays. I, I think he would win this race if he was going to run in it, but he's not going to. So it's absolutely pointless for me even saying that. And then looking at the list, Lucia going to go to the Mayor's Novice. Tamura, so I don't think it's going to be quick enough. I think he won a, a pretty weak Tolworth. Um, and then High Definition, I'd definitely give a chance to. I think out of those that will run in the race, he'd, he'd be in my small short list, I think, at this moment in time. Gaelic Warrior's not going to run. Hunter's Yarn, I don't think is good enough. Diverge, you, you've seen him get beat by High Definition in a maiden hurdle, but then massively come on for it and, and improve and win very well. Mullins has a twinkle in his eye when he talks about him. It's tricky to work out how good he really is. In the pocket, going to run in the Ballymore, chasing fire. I just don't think he's going to be good enough. For addition, not good enough. Strong leader, I think will run well. I'm not sure he'll win the race. Really, really, really tricky. And a wide open Supreme. And, and maybe that makes this Supreme more intriguing. It wasn't an appreciated. It wasn't a, a, a Willie Mullins odds on favourite this mm -hmm. is going to be really really exciting I think right now if I was to back a horse I'd back in Perry Pass and I'll run a no bet I think you think we're on the Ballymore so I think out of the others potentially high definition yeah it'd be Marie National and, and I'd be glancing at high definition each way at the moment but it, it certainly wouldn't be strong and Marie National certainly the top and if if I'm in a situation you know I know people snuff their nose about backing each way at 9 to 2 5 to 1 if I can get 5 to 1 on the day Marie National I, there's just no way in hell he's going to be out of the 3 and then moving on then to the, the, the Ballymore the race in Perry Pass is probably going to run in um, this is a Good race. 
Top Hermes alone, price, yeah. yeah. Hermes alone at the top while the market nine to four in Perry Pass, three to one, Gennett Warrior in there. Good land champ Kylie in the pocket. Oh my lord. Really, really strong. Yeah, really good race. Top four or five in, in the betting. You could make a very, very feasible case for Hermes Allen's the favourite. You can see why based off what he's done. The Chalos worked out well. Do you like him? I like him as a horse. I think he's a very good horse. Um, I suppose I will forever... I know he's a, probably a different type of horse. But I'll almost never forget the feeling I had with Brave Man's Game a few years ago when he ran in the Ballymore. He was of a similar tight profile in terms of what he'd won he'd won the cello very impressively and i just could not see him getting beat and it's very rare for me to be so bullish on an english horse but i just couldn't see him get beat and he was absolutely whooped in the end now he's obviously turned into a very good horse i wasn't wrong with thinking he was a very good horse and i think this horse is a very good horse hermes allen but you do look at the rest of the race and go geez i think something beats him i wouldn't be able to to tell you i'm probably 60 40 between Goodland and Impere Pass. They'd be my two against the field at the moment. I'm really keen on Goodland. And I know people will think that's maybe just me trotting in on the Barry Connell stuff. But this horse has got an awful lot of class. And I think he won really snugly at Leopardstown the last day in that grade one. I think it's not a bad little race. I think it will prove to be, because I think there could be horses coming out, but they will run well in the Bartlett, run well in the Martin Pike, maybe down the field. Don't think it's a bad race by any stretch. And then Impere Pass. I'd be similar to you. I could see him running very well wherever he ran. But he seems to have stamina. His jumping is immaculate. Mm -hmm. And I think he does an awful lot of things right. And for a horse that does that, I'd prefer to take 7-2 to two him. About a little bit more potential maybe. And a little bit more untapped uh, from what we've seen than maybe Hermes Allen. Okay, Warrior. Thoughts? Good horse. I think you you would probably have... I, I want to know what, what you think, because I think Gaelic Warrior is a tremendous horse, but I just couldn't back him at all. And I think he has the ability to win the Ballymore if he jumps straight. And the way that he's going to... to I, I can't see him fixing it massively in, what, four or five weeks. He's, he's always going to have that quirk. I would definitely worry. I think he's got the natural ability to win the race. I'm just not sure he's professional enough to do, do you think so. he will win the race no i don't i think imperial pass will win the race it's actually tricky i can't say it with head in chest like i have done there because hermes alone i'd imagine is going to make the running and then you're going to have good land not a million miles off him champ kylie is going to be right up there as champ well kylie is going to be right up there Gaelic Warrior is going to be in behind. I could see him almost destroying any chance of Impero Pass. If he's jumping out to the right, he's taking the field with him. That massively comes into it. I wonder if, for instance, Daryl Jacobs on Impero Pass or someone else, or even Paul Town, and they took him on the inside, make sure he's not interfered with Gaelic Warrior, but then they'll be wanting to do that with Gaelic Warrior to make sure he doesn't go out to his right. So it's, it's tricky. I think maybe the ones at the front could benefit from Gaelic Warrior being in the field and, and potentially cause, causing a bit of carnage behind. I think I just... I just side with Imperi Pass, given I think he's going to stay. He's the best jumper in the race, and I do think he does have that superstar what? potential. Yeah, no, I agree with that. What would you think about what they're going to do riding arrangements, though? Because I know fundamentally what, what I would think is that, that Daryl Jacob will, will probably end up on Imperi Pass and Gaelic Warrior will be ridden by Townend out of near on matter of convenience. And I know Townend likes to ride the Rich Richie horses. But... At the same stage, like I really find it difficult to believe because Townend has the has the pick, mm -hmm. no matter what, it, what what people think, he has the pick, and he must be more impressed with what Imperi Pass has done than Gaelic Warrior. He must have the exact same fears that we have about his jumping. Equally, I think that he probably doesn't think there's an awful lot between the two, and then obviously given um, the Simon Manure and Isaac Swade retainer of Daryl Jacob and uh, Rich Ritchie owning Gaelic Warrior, I think he might just go that way. Yeah, I, do. I, I can see that happening. I think that's what will happen. I'm just not sure, like, if I was in that situation, I think you'd want to be on Imperi Pass, personally. I agree. Now moving on to the Mare's Novice Hurdle on the Thursday. Very competitive. Lucia, a short price favourite, and we've seen her twice this season. Afro Diamond in there, night and day, a lot of joy, you wear it well. Magical Zoe, Hermonia Maker good race yeah again very good race good to see Nicky Anderson having a, a mare at the top there I don't think it's Willie Mullins' best lot of mares novices that we've seen in no. recent years I don't think there's any real standout there and 
Therefore, that probably contradicts what I'm about to say. But I know some people are very, very sweet on this horse. And of course, if you've backed it at lovely prices, fair dues to I'd be very much different if she was 7-1 to one rather than 7-4. to four. I think it's a really poor price, though, Josh. I really think... It, yeah, I think it's a very poor price, to be honest. How come? You're just playing with fire. Like, you've seen how this race is, has gone in, in years gone by. I know Harry Fry won it last year again, though. Like, Willie Munns' top mare in that race was Grangy in the end. And Grangy was a super mare for connections, but she was never really probably a grade one horse. Now... I know you probably look at the Astro Diamonds night and days, a lot of joys. Do you really think there's a proper grade one horse in there? Maybe not. But at the same stage, you're taking a lot on trust that this Lucia can go out and beat everything that Ireland has to offer. And I think she may well be the best horse in the race long term. But we saw Epitant go to the race in similar style a few years ago. And, and and blew out at a very short price. And to be honest, I know we all hooped and hollered and it was great to hear the commentator, Cheltenham next for Lucia when she won at Exeter. Like, you'd have hoped your dog with two, two legs would, would have won that race at Exeter. So, uh, did she not just achieve exactly what you'd have expected any one of the mares in the top 10 in the betting to have achieved there? I, I would agree. I wouldn't be backing her at a 7-4. I would love night and day to win, but I would have loved to have seen her again and, and come on for that yeah. run. You're just not sure where you sit with her. So I think at the moment, my bet would probably be Magical Zoe at 10 to 1, who we've not seen for a long time as well. But I think the way the race is going to be ran will suit her down to the ground. A really strong two mile, one furlong right up the street. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. Yeah, really. She's type of mare that the, the race will suit. Obviously, that, that form actually from Down Royal earlier in the year was, was strong. I think, and you, you've made a very compelling point to the fact that she's going to be held up off the pace. Is Adrian Heskin going to ride her? That would be maybe not quite top of my agenda, but at the same stage, she's got a decent chance. He got a good tune out of her back then, and I think going there fresh is probably not a bad angle. What do you fancy in the race? I've come round to the idea that Lotta Joy may have a, have a chance in this race, not in a dissimilar vein to yourself, that she's going to be held up off the pace. She's run very well in some competitive flat handicaps, you know, those mile six, two mile big flat handicaps, and has run home well. And this race, they usually go too fast out in front, to be honest. And I know you've got a, a mare like Astro Diamond who will be ridden very cold, Lotta Joy will be ridden cold, Magical Zoe will be ridden, ridden cold, but... I think this lot of joy is a bit more class than we've maybe seen so far. And she can just polish up that jumping another little bit. I think she could go quite close. The final novice hurdle that we're going to talk about is the Albert Bartlett, the Andrew Blair White, Barnestown lad, Andrew Andrew Bartlett, Albert Bartlett. Uh, really looking forward to this race. Looks competitive. Corbett's Cross up there. Uh, Embassy Gardens, Three Car Bragg, Hinder Valley Lake, Favori de Champ du, uh, Sandor Clegane, Monty Star, Absolute Notions. Good race. Yeah, very good race. Again, though, in a very similar vein to usual Albert Bartlett's wide open. Mm. Uh, plenty of horses that have a bit of quality. Some have proven themselves at the trip. Some will be going up in trip. Some need to probably polish up their jumping. Corbett's Cross favourite at five to one. He's gone into favourite. Tism after winning uh, the two mile novice hurdle at Nace the other day, uh, beating found of 50. I think that's good form. They were readily clear. And if I'm being brutally honest, I know it's five to one. I know he's favourite. If he turns up, and I suppose that is a bit of an if, given what Emmett Mullins has said after that race. But if he turns up at Cheltenham, that's a, a positive from trainer and owner that they, they believe the horse is ready to go. And if the horse is ready to go, I think he takes some stopping. Interesting. I've got two or three I like. I've not really come down on one yet. I do like Hidden Valley Lake. I think yep. he's got gears and he stays. I think that race was very good. The one that was beaten by Monty Star. So Monty Star again would be another one. But the one that I, I keep looking at a little bit is... I wouldn't know where, where you're going to come here. You could throw American Mike at me. Battle it's over Doyen. Not, is he a novice still? It's not Battle over Doyen. It's Seabat Bistro. Okay, I can see that. Fourth yeah. in the champion bumper last year. Obviously, it took him three goes over hurdles to win, but he did get the job done. He didn't look particularly impressive. I just think he's going to come on massively for it. And Willie Mullins' little comments here and there, I think that, that we're yet to see the very best of Seabat Bistro over hurdles. I think the extended trip will help him. And I think he's 22 to 1 about a horse that finished fourth in the champion bumper, who I think at the start of the season, many would have expected to be right up there in the betting for this. I don't think he's done 
everything right. I don't think he's done everything wrong. Maybe 22 to 1 is a big price each way. Yeah, you get the um, the feeling from listening to Willie Mullins, he's been a bit of a disappointment this year. I remember him talking about him going into his hurdle debut punch down that I was at, and he got beaten into third. And just Willie Mullins was near on in tears. I think he thought he was going to be a real chance. I suspect if you told him at the start of the year that that horse would be 22 to 1 for the mm. Bartlett, He'd have said take a two off, really. Uh, I, th- I think they really hold him in high regard. I can see that point big time. Uh, look, I- I've already put up Xander Clegane in the anti- anti-post series at 25 to 1. Not a bad little price at 25s. He's currently best price 10s. Wouldn't be in a mad rush to back him at the moment at 10s. I'd be very surprised if you couldn't get just as big on the day. Uh, I think he'll come forward for that run at Leopardstown. It was obviously his first run for a little while. He needs to polish his jumping up fundamentally believe he's probably a little bit short of the required but I think he'll run well I, I'd be very surprised if he's out the back of the telly at the same stage I think he's a near on cert to be in the first four or five and you would absolutely love that we do hope you've enjoyed this video we are going to be doing final selections over on Twitter for each day and uh, they'll be going up the day before each day of the festival and uh, we will have more of a maybe a smaller shortlist come next week's videos i think i think we do like a few horses but again like in a race like this you're not 100 percent sure who's going to run will they change the mind with impero pass in the other races i just think that's our current thoughts and uh, maybe in a week's time we might know a little bit more yeah you'd you'd think so like you're refreshing twitter every morning hoping to goodness you're not seeing that <laughs> dreaded red x that, that red x is absolute uh, it kills me while looking at it because I've seen it all before. I've seen a time hill before. Run wild, Fred. Remember the day, run wild, Fred, and wide receiver. My two absolute nags for 2021 Cheltenham. Boat ruled out on the same evening. I was near on in tears. It was absolutely brutal. We don't want any more red crosses. But if you do want some more videos, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you soon.